Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning and Finance. In the last video we've seen the definition and the basic structure of an artificial neural network. And in this video we want to shortly discuss the question how to train, how to fit a neural network. For example, a simple single layer perceptron same for the multi-layer perceptron. Obviously, the multi-layer perceptron needs even more time than the single layer, but uh, the principles are the same. Now, we've seen that the neural network has quite a large number of parameters. Why is that? Because we have the parameters, the weights, the coefficients of the linear combinations of our features in the first layer for the observable features. And then we have the hidden layer where we are recombining um, those observations for the features um, and those combinations of the features. And again, we have another set of coefficients or weights as we call them in artificial neural networks. So with alpha m, m going from one through m and beta k going from one through k, the numbers of hidden layers and outputs, um, and obviously also the biases, these are the intercepts in those linear combinations. Um, and this is actually quite a large number and it can increase even more if we add another hidden layer, another hidden layer in the multi-layer perceptron. Now, the parameters are chosen such that the model predictions fit the training data well, as is um, the same as in any uh, statistical learning um, model. But um, what can we done um, for training the model in the case of in the special case of neural network? Well, uh, we have to distinguish between regression analysis and classification. For regression, you usually you rely on the sum of squared errors as a measure of fit. So, for example, we use the cost function r of theta being the squared um, errors y i k. Those are the observations we have for the k. Uh, outputs. Remember that actually, even though this is regression analysis for the neural network, we can actually have more than one response variable minus our predictions. We square them and then we add all this up for all observations, but also for all outputs. Theta is the vector that contains all trainable parameters, so all the weights of the neural network. And we have n training examples. For classification, you usually use the so-called cross entropy or deviance, which is you take your predictions, FK, uh, based on the features, um, you take the logarithm, you multiply it with the um, uh, observed values for the response, Y, I, K. Usually this will be one or zero, and thus you get the errors. And then you also add it all up and take uh, the negative of this. Now, the corresponding classifier in this case is usually the arc max function. That is, the class to which the highest probability is assigned is chosen as the prediction. Now, these are the, um, in the sense, the error functions, the cost functions. We need to minimize these to train our neural network. And the generic approach here is via gradient descent. You might know gradient descent also from our computational finance lecture. Gradient descent is the idea that in order to minimize a function, this is actually generic, generic optimization, in order to minimize a function r, you compute the gradient uh, in the um, one-dimensional case, this is simply uh, the first derivative. Um, you compute the gradient and then you move into the direction of the steepest descent, and that's given by the gradient. And then uh, you have an iterative um, algorithm and you try to minimize the function by moving down in the direction of the gradient. Now, in the setting of neural networks, the gradient descent is usually referred to as back propagation, quite famously, as the gradient can easily be derived by the chain rule of differentiation, and this can be done in a forward or backward sweep over the network. For details, you should have a look at the Hasty Tipsy Runyon Friedman textbook. You can also look, and I would appreciate if you do this um, and recommend this highly. Uh, take a look at these two links here um, and you will find two videos, um, this one and this one, um, in which the um, backpropagation algorithm in the context of neural networks is quite nicely explained. 
Now, calculating the gradients based on the whole data sample, uh, be sure if you take a look at this function r here, you can see that this is based on all n observations. Yeah? And to calculate the gradient, you have to go through all the data, all the training observations. Now, again, to calculate the gradient, you need to go through all n examples or training observations and this is called batch learning and this can be quite costly in terms of computational time because if the data set is quite large computing the gradient also needs a lot of time therefore what one does is one usually relies on the so-called stochastic gradient descent or sgd algorithm which is also referred to sometimes as mini batch learning and what you do is you select small random subsamples you concentrate on a randomly selected smaller subsample to update the network weights and as a consequence the computational burden for each iteration this is an iterative uh, procedure uh, it does not increase with the total number of training examples because you keep the size of those random subsamples fixed and you can increase the uh, training data but uh, the mini batches will remain this of the same size the number of training examples in each mini batch is referred to as the batch size, while a complete sweep over the entire data sample of n, capital N, observations is referred to as one epoch. And a neural network is typically trained over multiple epochs, so you can see with this huge number of parameters and the need to calculate the gradient in each iteration to minimize our um, cost function, um, training a neural network with a large data set usually with, um, requires a lot of time. Remember that a huge problem with neural networks is because of this huge number of parameters, we have a huge flexibility, overfitting becomes a huge problem. So we have uh, numerous parameters and neural networks are prone to overfitting at the global minimum of the cost function. Now, while there are many means to mitigate overfitting, for example, by using smaller batch sizes that have a regularizing effect, there are also other simpler methods that explicitly address the problem of overfitting. And in the application, we will see two of these methods. The first one is dropout, the other one is early stopping. Now, dropout is frequently used um, in a way where we are using non-output units and we are randomly removing those non-output units from the network during training. So again, we are reducing the observations that are being used to train the model. While early stopping addresses the question of how long to train a neural network and we have some stopping rule that determines that training is stopped when the model performance starts to deteriorate on a validation set. So in a sense, we are already including the validation set in our training. And if we see that actually uh, the model seems to overfit and the model seems to um, learn only based on the training um, sample and doesn't generalize well, we stop. So this is what we will see in the application. But before we um, go to the application, we quickly introduce an extension of neural networks, which is convolutional. Um, neural networks in the next video.